यमुना तीर बन चारी यमुना तीर बन चारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज बिहारी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नितानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाध श्री वासादी गोर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय प्रभुपाद जय प्रभुपाद जय जगदगुरु शील प्रभुपाद नेताई गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बोल हरि बोल
जयम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिभ्राज गचार्य अष्टत श्री श्रीमादेशी भक्तिवेदंत स्वामी शिल प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव भक्त बृंद की नमाचर शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिव साध श्री गौर भक्त बृंद की ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवतम की समवत वैष्णव भक्त बृंद की निताई गौर प्रमानंदे हरि हरि तुम ज्ञानतिमीरांधश ज्ञानंजन शलाकया चक्षुरन्मीतंजन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनहा स्थापित जेन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददातीश पदंतिक वंदे अहम श्रीगुर श्रीजूतपदकमल श्रीगुरी वैष्णवांगा श्रीरूप साग्रजात सह गुणुर्गुणथा सजीव साधवैत सवधूत पुरीजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपद सह गुणलिताश्री विशाखान्ता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कंत राधक नमस्तते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधिवृंदावनेश्वरी विशोभानुश्रुते देवी प्रणमा हरिप्रिय मंछाकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुब एव च पथीता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर शिवसादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखंकरतिचाल पंगुंगलंघयति गिरी यत्पा तमहंग वंदे श्रीगुरी दिनतारिणम परमानंदमाधव श्रीचैतन्यमीश्वर reading from shrimad bhagavatam canto 8 chapter 22 chapter entitled bole maharaj surrenders his life text 26 janma karma baya rupa vidyasarja dhanadivi jadashana bhavit stambhas tatrayam madanagraha जन्म कर्म बय रूप विद्य धना जद्दशा न भवत स्तंभ तत्रुग्रह जन्म कर्म बय रूप विद्य धना जद्दश न भवत स्तंभ तत्रुग्रह प्लीज
त्रोंग मालन ग्रहा माता जी जन्म कर्म बयारुपा विद्यशर्जा धनादिवि तत्रायं मालन ग्रहा Yaddashyana bhavet stambhas Yatrayam madana graha What meaning? Janma By birth in an aristocratic family Karma By wonderful activities Pious activities Bayaha by age, especially youth, when one is capable of doing many things. Rupa, by personal beauty, which attracts anyone. Vidya, by education. Asharya, by opulence. Dhana, by wealth. Adivhi, by other opulences also. Yadi, if, Aisha, of the possessor, no, not, Bhavet, there is, Stambha, pride, Tatra, in such a condition, I am, a person, Madhanagraha, should be considered to have received my special mercy. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Shami, Srila Prabhupada. Jai Srila Prabhupada ki translation. If a human being is born in an aristocratic family or a higher status of life, if he performs wonderful activities, if he is youthful, if he has personal beauty, a good education and good wealth, and if he is nonetheless not proud of his opulences, it is to be understood that he is especially favored by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Purport. When, in spite of possessing all these opulences, a person is not proud, this means that he is fully aware that all his opulences are due to the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He therefore engages all his possessions in the service of the Lord. A devotee knows very well that everything, even his body, belongs to the Supreme Lord. If one leaps perfectly in such Krishna consciousness, it is to be understood that he is especially favored by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The conclusion is that one's being deprived of his wealth is not to be considered the Lord's special mercy, uh, not to be considered the special mercy of the Lord. If one continues in his opulent position but does not become unnecessarily proud, falsely thinking that he is the proprietor of everything, this is the Lord's special mercy. Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutala Srimati Bhakti Sharupada Amadara Shamini Dinamini Namashad Bhakta Muni Muni Purud Bhavaya Cha Prabhupada Lashad Bani Pracharanirataya Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutala Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Shamini Dinamini Namaste Sharashati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Nirbhishesh Shrinavadi Paschatta Deshatari Many years ago I was giving class in the temple and I was explaining um, one famous verse of Srimad Bhagavatam Jadahaṁ anagrinnāmi harishetad dhanaṅshanai If I bestow my special mercy to somebody, someone, to some devotee then I take away his wealth 
चदाहम अनुगृहामि हरिषे हरिषे मीन्स आई स्टील आई स्टील हिज वेल्थ एंड ऑपुलेंसेस हरिषे तो धनंग शन स्टेप बाय स्टेप स्टेप बाय स्टेप आई स्टील सो आई वाज एक्सप्लेनिंग दैट भार्स एंड देर वाज ए वीआईपी गेस्ट स्टेइंग इन द कॉन्ज बिल्डिंग हु वाज अ गुड फ्रेंड ऑफ प्रभुपाद बट सम अदर आफ्टर क्लास ही कॉल्ड मी and he told me that please don't explain this verse um, especially when people from kolkata and other cities you know they are coming don't explain this verse so elaborately i asked why <laughs> he said if they know this the meaning of this verse they will become nervous and they will never come to iskon and they will never try to become devotee of iskon so <laughs> at the time i was little embarrassed but today after reading this bhars um i think this type of bhars uh, will be very much encouraging to those uh, who are who has little you know desire for material opulences in this bhars krishna is actually uh, he is speaking the opposite completely opposite he is telling uh even in spite of possessing all these opulences if that devotee is not proud and sila prabhupad explained in the purport if one continues in his opulent position so if one continues in opulent position but uh does not become unnecessarily proud falsely thinking that he is the proprietor of everything this is the lord's special mercy so de- for devotee everything is special mercy for a real devotee tatte anukampa susumik samano devotee thinks everything is your mercy when there is opulence this is your mercy when there is danger this is your mercy actually lord is all merciful so there can be nothing other than mercy but it depends on the you know a situation sometimes just like father sometimes can slap sometimes we see father is slapping but that doesn't mean that it is cruelty it is also mercy even we have seen in the past time of chaitanya mahaprabhu his elder brother vishwarupa uh, was slapped by his father jagannath misra and so this is a kind of mercy it is not that it is it is not mercy uh, when father is calling his son uh, or daughter this is mercy so similarly when you know there is some you know uh, awkward situation created by the lord or lord steals you know our material opulences uh, in certain circumstances this is mercy uh, sometimes lord gives wealth sometimes demigods also they give wealth when when the worshipper of demigods they pray to the demigods and they get lot of wealth and sometimes lord also gives wealth uh, krishna himself sometimes gives wealth sometimes takes away mm. when krishna takes away wealth uh, when krishna sees that this wealth is detrimental to his spiritual life this wealth is going to be harmful for his future you know development for his future you know um well being if this wealth is becoming uh, you know detrimental to his spiritual well being then lord can take away devotee's wealth the example is sila prabhupad in sila prabhupad life um <coughs> it was written in his horoscope that he will become a very rich man and prabhupad he believed it that one day he will become a very rich man but when he was trying to become rich man by opening different um, medical shops and uh, pharmacies actually his all plan failed because he was thinking that i will open many you know medical pharmacies and also um, he was manufacturing some medicines so he thought by manufacturing medicine he will become one of the richest men in india as it is mentioned in his horoscope but his experience was different he saw one by one his all business and they were failed then he himself remembered this verse jadahang anugrahami 
for his sake or dhanangshana whomever i offer my special mercy i steal away his wealth but later on because krishna has stolen his you know wealth his all business failed that's why prabhupad was compelled krishna created a situation uh, which forced him to leave his you know household life and he went to uh, america practically speaking completely penniless uh, when he went to america he was uh, penniless he does he did not have any supporters he he did not have good health at the time you know he had heart attacks so practically speaking he had no material asset at that time no money no health no supporter nothing uh, so prabhupad was forced uh, in that situation without any material um, opulences he left india and he went to america and very soon within a very short time krishna again rewarded him with lot of material opulences uh, we see now uh, iskon is one of the richest organization in the in this planet now so krishna takes and krishna gives uh, krishna will take when krishna can krishna understand that if i give opulence or material facilities to this person yeah, it will be detrimental to his spiritual uh, upliftment it will be detrimental to his spiritual progress so krishna at that time krishna takes but that is actually not the uh, uh, highest mercy because because nobody even ordinary father doesn't like to see uh, sometimes people think that oh uh, living a poverty poverty stricken life is krishna's mercy why even ordinary father doesn't like to see that his uh, children are poverty stricken you know, supreme father who is most merciful why he will tolerate poverty uh, of his devotees uh, pandavas are uh, staying in forest but but for how many years for 12 13 years if you see the whole lifetime of pandavas maximum life maximum time of their life they are opulent you see um, dhruva maharaj he was also living in forest for few maybe 6 months something like this but compared to 6 months and then later on he became you know king and then uh, he achieved dhruvaloka and as a king he ruled this planet for 36000s of years so compared to 36000s of years and after that he went to dhruvaloka and still now he is staying in dhruvaloka which is one of the loka called local vaikuntha dhruvaloka is local vaikuntha is as opulent as vaikuntha so he still they are you know enjoying opulent life uh, so compared to his 6 months austerity 6 months you know he was staying in forest uh, so if you compare actually his opulent life is uh, still going on is little you know uh, life like you know penniless penniless uh, beggar little life little time is nothing compared to the opulent life he is you know, enjoying now so actually why krishna takes away and why krishna gives that central point is service hmm. when devotee is ready to serve him to facilitate the service to facilitate the service krishna gives as much as you need hmm. just like government government gives so many facilities to um, those who are like you know big officers like dm Uh, sdo dm they get uh, quarters they get quarter they get uh, personal car uh, they get so many facilities you know uh, those who are holding post like dms so why why government is providing so many facilities to them because the car is not for his personal enjoyment the car is given for serving the government the quarters given not for his personal enjoyment but for serving the government so all the facilities provided by government to high officers same facilities are not not given to the clerk because clerk is not rendering a great service to the government yeah, clerk is giving small service so his facilities he is also getting small salary but a big officer they get so many facilities so many facilities 
so that facilities are not for his enjoyment but these facilities are given actually to facilitate his service so that he can serve the government comfortably similarly krishna gives facilities uh, so that we can serve him we can serve him comfortably uh, so uh, that is special mercy sila prabhupad was given uh, so many facilities wealth everything uh. so why it was given to prabhupad because krishna knew that uh, prabhupad will be serving krishna and that's why krishna has given facilities to sila prabhupad yeah. and uh, the main asset is that a real devotee after achieving all those facilities he is not proud he understands nothing belongs to me uh, the best example is said by uh, bali maharaj the bali maharaj he understood finally that even his body doesn't belong to him everything belongs to god so what what is the i mean reason of being proud there is nothing to become proud but because of ignorance uh, sometimes uh, due to ignorance people forget uh, sometimes devotee also can forget that everything belongs to god but bali maharaj uh, under all circumstances he achieved so much wealth uh, actually he became the proprietor of um, three planetary system uh, upper planetary system middle planetary system and lower planetary system even after achieving all this uh, planetary system uh, he was not proud and uh, that was tested by bamandev when bamandev in the form of trivikrama he took away everything generally what happens if someone is attached to all these opulences um, the attachment is proved at the time of you know uh, situation like you know someone is taking your someone is stealing your wealth someone is you know taking your uh, opulences at that time generally those who are attached they become angry they become upset but bali maharaj was not upset uh, under all circumstances even though uh, krishna has taken everything uh, still he was not upset uh, because he realized uh, he had little little pride that uh, this body belongs to me but that one also finally he understood that body also doesn't belong to me uh, everything belongs to god so when he understood that everything belongs to god then again krishna gave him uh, facilities better than heaven he was given shutala shutala planetary system which was better than heaven in all respect uh, the wealth in shutala planet was much superior than heavenly planet and the protection he got because bamanodev himself became the protector of shutala planet so the protection he got was the highest so in this way apparently in the beginning he lost something he lost something but again he regained better wealth uh, better protection that he had before uh, because in shutala planet uh, the demigods could go and disturb them because demons are always enemy to the uh, demigods so if bamandev was not protecting um, bali maharaja's uh, shutala planet then demigods could disturb demigod could go there and disturb uh, once i i told in the last class that once ravana ravana went to uh, encroach uh, bali maharaja's shutala planet and at that time bamandev he just kicked him uh, he kicked uh, ravana and he, by one kick uh, ravana was um, you know thrown 80000 miles uh, so it is possible only by bamandev only by god so in this way uh, bali maharaj he achieved you know all all kinds of opulences uh, so this is a very nice uh, lesson that uh, uh, that uh, we, sometimes people are you know criticizing that you know iskon devotees are you know uh, living in an opulent uh, you know buildings and opulent uh, facilities they are uh, they are having many cars um, propad was sometimes telling in this temple we have 40 cars in this temple we have you know he was telling like this sometimes so <coughs> actually everything is man for service 
Prabhupada replied to one man, uh, that man was telling that uh, why you are constructing so many big buildings. So Prabhupada said, actually when I was staying in the cottage, that bhajan kutir is still there, actually that bhajan kutir also has become very much opulent now. I heard, <laughs> I heard when Prabhupada was there, bhajan kutir was not that much opulent. It was made with much more simple um, way and much more using simple bamboos and there was not so much uh, painting and this and that. It was very ordinary. But after Prabhupada left, um, it was made more aristocratic by painting and by making a little design and this and that. Uh, once there was a plan that this bhajan kutir will be uplifted, you know, on a platform and will be done more uh, nicely. So, uh, actually I was objecting, but it is not, uh, not correct because Prabhupada said, let people come and see from where we have started. Let people realize from where we have started and how much we have progressed. So, we have started from bhajan kutir, you know, bhajan kutir, the starting point and now all these TOVP and everything, is, uh, the progress is unlimited, it's growing and growing and growing. So people will have the chance to compare from where it started. Uh, so Prabhupada replied that if I am staying in this bhajan kutir, uh, when I was staying in this bhajan kutir, not many people are coming to see us. Uh, now ISKCON has become a tourist spot. Uh, I heard it is like a trap, trap, you know. Just like we catch sometimes, you know, a rat is caught in the trap. So, uh, these buildings and beautiful gardens that uh, Mayapur has become an international tourist spot, it is actually a very nice trap to capture the atheistic people, to capture the non-devotees, so that they come here by, uh, to see all these, you know, opulent uh, buildings and gardens, and they want to see Western devotees, so they come here. But after coming here, um, situation forced them to purchase a book, to listen Bhagavatam class, to listen Gita class. In this way, um, they become captured. Ah, uh, my, my personal life is also like this. I was not interested in ISKCON. Uh, rather, I had some inimical feeling towards ISKCON. I remember very clearly. Uh, because my friends are telling like this, you know, my friends are telling this is spa, you know, this is a, this is American spy, this, that, so many things I was hearing. And as a simple hearted boy, I was believing all these things. I was believing. I never thought to even visit, visit Mayapur. I never thought like this. But by reading Prabhupada's books, I got attracted. So, the facilities Krishna has given and Prabhupada said, that a devotee can continue with opulence uh, as long as he is not proud. The moment he becomes proud, for Krishna, he can steal your, I mean, small opulence uh, in, a, in a moment. He can steal. Uh, so that, that is our, that we should be very much vigilant, that we don't become proud under any circumstances. Uh, whatever facilities and opulences Krishna is gave, giving, even your house, even your house uh, should be utilized for Krishna's service. How? Uh, many devotees are coming to Mayapur. So if you have a house there, you can invite them there, you can preach them, uh, you can feed them in your house. In this way, if your house is utilized for preaching, Krishna will be very happy. Krishna will be very happy. So this is the lesson from this uh, important verse. Uh, this verse is little uncommon because generally we are always hearing that Jadahang Anugrinnami Harishet Adhanang Shanai Whomever I bestow my special mercy, I steal away his opulences. But there are so many proofs. Uh, Shodama Vipra, he got opulences. He got opulences. In the beginning he was little leading a poor life. But finally he became like a king. Uh, so there are so many instances, Dhruva Maharaj, and all the um, devotees like uh, um, Ambarish Maharaj, you know, Prahlad Maharaj, our Srimad Bhagavatam is filled with the narrations of devotees who are, who are very, very opulent. Ah. And in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime, 
um, there are very many nice instances of contrast. Hmm? Contrast. You know, in, in television there is a switch called contrast. Uh, what they do with the switch? Contrast switch, switch. Anybody who is expert can tell. In television there is a switch called contrast. What they do with that switch? Hmm? Suppose there is black and white color. So if you, if you adjust contrast, black and white will be very distinctly shown. If, the, if it is seven color television, then if you adjust this contrast, seven color will be very distinctly visible. So in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, you will find many contrast characters. I give some examples. Actually, if some poor man, a street beggar comes to, you know, devotional life, then if he is lying under a tree, uh, we may argue that uh, he, was, he was a beggar before, now he is lying under a tree. So it is not, um, I mean, very much difficult for him because he was habituated to that life, lifestyle. But in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu collected uh, his associates from such an aristocratic background. Say for example, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami was a jamindar and he was habituated in a very aristocratic life. So when Raghunath Das Goswami joined Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement, Raghunath Das Goswami, he was, finally he was eating uh, rice of Jag I mean, Jagannath Prasadam which was thrown in the dustbin, which, which was thrown in the drain. Raghunath Das Goswami used to collect those rotten rice which was not even, even uh, eaten by cows. He was collecting those rice and he was washing those rice two, two, three times. After washing repeatedly, whatever little hard portion was left, he used to eat those, those you know, rotten rice he used to eat. So, he came from a Jamindar background, he came from a kingly background, according to Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Actually, uh, he came from a background which is uh, compared that his opulence was better than Indra. Somehow, he was enjoying a very, very, I mean, very aristocratic life, very comfortable life. His wife was very, very beautiful. He, uh, he achieved all material success. Raghunath Das Goswami, by birth, because his father was Jamindar. So, but when he left his family life and joined Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, actually those who set example of renunciation, Raghunath Das Goswami was the topmost among the uh, renunciates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers. Raghunath Das Goswami was topmost. So here is a contrast that he came from a kingly family, he came, came from a Jamindar family, but he led a life of utmost uh, extreme renunciation. Similarly, another example is Maharaj Pratabhrudra. Maharaj Pratabhrudra is a king and he was not ordinary king. Uh, in India there are many kings, but Maharaj Pratabhrudra, king of Urisha, was so powerful that in the history of Urisha, I heard that Urisha never became uh, subjugated by Mughals or British. It was always more or less independent, Urisha. So this uh, King Pratabhrudra was so powerful, he was ruling even some portion of South India. Ah, the Vidyanagar was part of South India. So that King Pratabhrudra was so powerful and I mean, generally king, they have pride. And it is natural, king has pride. But King Pratabhrudra, he was so humble, beyond our imagination. Uh, one day he was watching that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing in, in chariot festival. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing before Lord Jagannath. And Maharaj Pratabhrudra was watching. In front of Maharaj Pratabhrudra, Srivas Thakur was standing. And he was also absorbed in watching Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's dance. So as a king, Maharaj Pratabhrudra had a servant, um, Harish Chandra, Hari, Hari Chandan. Hari Chandan was his assistant, his secretary. So he was standing beside Maharaj Pratabhrudra. So he was pushing Srivas Thakur. Uh, can you move aside? Because behind you, King Pratabhrudra is standing. So can you move aside? So as <coughs> Srivas Thakur was already absorbed in watching Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's dance, he could not understand that somebody is pushing him. So he did not move. So again and again, Hari Chandan, uh, King's secretary, again and again he started pushing him. Can you hear me? 
can you kindly move aside? So, Srivastakuru was, he, he did not have sense of his body, you know, he was completely in spiritual world. He was watching directly Krishna dancing in front of him. He lost his body consciousness and he was uh, completely absorbed. So, King Harish, I mean the secretary, Harichandan, started by force, can you move little aside? The King Prataprudu is behind you. And then suddenly, Sivashtakur understood that somebody is pushing me and he just, uh, you know, looked back and slapped, slapped Harichandan. So, Harichandan became very angry and he wanted to, you know, revenge. So, then King Prataprudra stopped him. Do you know how much lucky you are? I don't have that much luck. I did not achieve that much luck. You are very, very lucky. If I can get a slap from this devotee, he was, you know, called, he called him and trying to make him understand that if Sivastakur would have slapped me, it was my, it would be my great, great fortune. I am not that much lucky as you are. So you see a king coming from a, you know, so aristocratic background who are naturally proud, the kings are naturally proud, but he showed the ex extreme humility. So this contrast, in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, many characters are like this. Ah. And Maharaj Pratap Rudra later on, he took a dress of, you know, beggar and he massaged Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's feet. So in this way, we saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got attracted by King Pratap Rudra's humility. So that is our real asset. Humility, pridelessness, you know, that is our real asset. Ah. Ah, Krishna, he is not affected by our you know, uh, wealth or he is the most, he is the richest person, he is the most beautiful person. Uh, you cannot attract Krishna by your beauty because he is the most beautiful. You cannot attract Krishna by your wealth because he is the most, uh, he is the richest person. You cannot attract Krishna by your bodily strength because he is the strongest person. Uh, so, only by humility, love and, you know, feelings, uh, you can, we can attract Krishna. So, this is a very nice lesson from this verse. Time is almost over. A uh, few minutes are left. If you have any comment or question, we can try to d yeah, discuss. Do you have any question or comment? Jibanath Prabhu. Hare Krishna. You're mentioning how in Bhagavatam we have so many examples of wealth and opulence and using it properly. Well, just within our own ISKCON movement in the last 50 years, we have a very prime example of opulence and how to use it properly. The managing director of the TOVP, Ambarish Prabhu, was born in one of the most aristocratic, wealthy families in America. Hmm. And at the very young age, he immediately said, I don't need all this stuff. I don't really care about it. I just want to surrender to Srila Prabhupada. And he surrendered everything to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was directing him how to use his, his wealth. So just within ISKCON, we can see that there are yeah. wonderful examples of how to use your wealth properly. Yes. Very nice example is Ambarish Prabhu, who is utilizing the God-gifted wealth for Krishna's service. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for your nice class. So, Prabhu, you say this uh, Raghunath Das Goswami, he was so uh, aristocratic family, but he still he was not proud. He has mm. so many things. But we see, I see, I have nothing, but he still proud. <laughs> so what is the root cause of proudness? How can we give, give up these things? Please explain then. Yeah, by devotion and knowledge. If we read Srimad Bhagavatam in the Association of Devotees, if we hear pastimes of Bali Maharaj, ah, Prabhupada said we are not stone, so the more we hear it will react, it will work on our consciousness. So hearing in the Association of Devotees, pastimes of Bali Maharaj, pastimes of Maharaj Pratap Rudra, ah, 
first times of you know kashap kashmiri they were proud but later on chitana mahaprabhu operated their heart ah uh, uh, kashap kashmiri then you know ballabh bhatta ballabh bhatta he was very proud ballabh bhatta so but uh, chitana mahaprabhu operated his heart <laughs> so if you read ballabh bhatta's past times if you read past times of kashap kashmiri past times of maharaj pratap rudra bolle maharaja's past time simply by hearing we can imbibe those qualities what is the root cause of this uh, fraud ignorance ignorance ah bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur told a story that one frog somehow he managed one coin mm-hmm. one coin you know so he was croaking now i am rich i have a coin uh, now i am rich i have a coin you know <laughs> so at that time a, an elephant was passing you know <laughs> elephant could not hear his croaking and as you know elephant was not attentive to the frog and suddenly the elephant stepped on the frog and the frog was smashed you understand <laughs> so frog was ignorant a uh, frog doesn't know what is king sexual wealth so he thought this one coin is a uh, king's wealth so he was thinking i am also king because i i got one coin you know <laughs> so ignorance we don't know actually uh, suppose someone is very handsome or beautiful and suddenly he or she sits beside someone and look that oh he is more beautiful than me you understand then he becomes humble understand similarly when you realize uh, we don't know power of god we don't know god's uh, you know wealth and opulences we don't know that's why with little you know coin we become proud so when we come to know that's why we should read simad bhagavatam uh, how powerful god is even if you read the uh, first canto of simad bhagavatam how all the purusha avatars Uh, how they are creating universes uh, and these purusha avatars are part and part of you know god's expansion kala you understand so uh, <coughs> prabhupad was giving example of sun one sun diffuses so much sunlight for so many you know millions of years and there are so many universes in each universe there are suns uh, so many suns are there Ah, Prabhupada was telling that from Krishna all the suns are coming. So Krishna must be very hot. <laughs> But he is sitting on Mother Jashoda's lap and Mother Jashoda is not feeling that heat. Ah, but all the suns are coming from Krishna. Ah, so when we think how powerful Krishna is, ah, then we become humble. Actually it is a fact. Sometimes I you know, go for preaching in villages. i see in village those who have a very nice teen house they are they become proud you know <laughs> they have to, we have a nice because others other houses are made of bamboo so his teen house uh, is a little proud you know <laughs> similarly you go to a little township then they are proud with maybe one street building then you go to you know like this you go to america then your this even even five street building you become humble with nothing you know <laughs> so like this it is a comparative uh, so when you can understand god's opulences then automatically you become humble first of all uh, this is not ours even if you have a five street building this is not yours everything all atoms belongs to god uh, including your body so there is nothing to be pride other than ignorance ignorance is the root cause of being proud okay thank you any other comment or ah prabhu has a comment hari krishna prabhu ji devotees have uh, devotees perform sankirtan yagya without offenses devotees perform sankirtan yagya without offenses and then they get wealth their wealth and prabhupad was saying that uh, uh, so much money will come the difficulty is how one manages and uh, uh, so how do devotees uh, manage their money prabhu 
Actually, you have to be very cautious, very vigilant. When you become nice devotee, Krishna can provide money, Krishna can provide wealth to facilitate your devotional service. But if we start again misusing that money, uh, if, you, if you again start misusing the opulences, then again Krishna can take away. Krishna can take away. So those who are cautious, their opulences will continue, as Srila Prabhupada said. Those who are not cautious, Krishna will again take away their opulences. So we have to be cautious that we never think that I am the proprietor. We never become proud. We always utilize whatever facilities is provided by God, whatever facilities is provided by Krishna. We utilize everything for his service. Okay? Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. So I stop here. Granthara Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Samavata Vaishnava Bhakta Vrinda ki, Nitai Gaur Pramanandi Hari Hari